right, so. Okay. Good morning, everyone. Uh, we are very happy to share with you that today is going to be a very exciting session. Uh, my name is Indira Jeffrey. I'm the project manager for, for Dream Builder in the USA. And uh, we have um, also Ethan Naylor. He is also a, um, our manager for uh, Dream Builder. And um, I just would like to um, tell you a little bit about the Dream Builder program. The Dream Builder is an online platform that is free for anyone to use at any time. The sponsor of the project, Freeport McMaren, has open access for learners at no cost to anyone, anywhere. We work with local partners around the world that support women's empowerment and the economic development of their um, communities. Uh, if, uh, I know that uh, we may have some entrepreneurs uh, here today, and um, if you like to know more about what is Dream Builder, I invite you to visit our website, www.dreambuilder.org. Today, we have a um, very special guest. Uh, her name is Pauline Nalumansi. Pauline is a T-Bird, uh, Thunderbird graduate, and she has an extended experience in entrepreneurship um, and she has um, um, been in several um, co um, pitch competitions, uh, national and internationally, but she will tell you more about it. And um, well, Pauline, uh, we are very happy to have you today. And I'm going to stop sharing my screen so you can go ahead and share yours okay. for being here today with us. And you can take it away. Yes. There we go. Awesome. Okay, should I start? Sure, go ahead. Okay, um, thank you so much, uh, Dream Builder, for giving me this opportunity. Uh, I welcome everybody for this workshop. Uh, I am excited to share my experience about pitch competitions uh, and talk about the best practices that you can use to win funding for your business, for your startup, or for your idea. Um, I'll talk a little bit about myself. Uh, my name is Pauline Nalumansi, as you heard. I am currently a University Innovation Fellow at Arizona State University. Uh, I am a Thunderbird alumna. <laughs> um, I have worked with Thunderbird for good uh, for the past uh, one year. Uh, I worked as a, an, a program assistant for the UN Global Compact uh, US Network. I am the founder of Pauline Foundation, a nonprofit that is based in Uganda that provides uh, practical education to break the poverty cycle among the youth and women. And I launched this foundation in 2018 after winning funding. Um, I have participated in seven pitch competitions and winning over $20,000 in funding. So just to encourage you and to get you excited, uh, pitching is an art. Um, I remember three years ago, almost three years, yeah, um, I just, I was a student at Arizona State University doing my bachelor's degree and I got an idea that I wanted to pitch for funding. I had no uh, experience in pitching. I didn't get any kind of like coaching on how to pitch. I just went to Change Maker Central and I told them I have an idea that I would want to pitch and see if I can get funding. And um, well, I was lucky enough that of course Change Maker Central Challenge was uh, applications were open. And so I uh, applied and I was picked as a finalist to pitch my idea. And uh, with zero experience, I have never pitched it before. I had just like come from Africa. I went on stage and I shared my story, my idea, and I won funding. 
um, the next speech, I partic speech competition I participated in, I was thrown to South Africa to pitch with so many other hundreds of students from across uh, the African continent. And still, I had no idea. I didn't have a mentor. I didn't have somebody coaching me. I just kept going on stage and presenting what I have, my idea, my passion, and I want funding. And so as I kept doing that over and over and over again, now here I am sharing my experience. And so I want to encourage you that even if you have never um, presented before, you have never been before uh, a, a big crowd of people talking about idea, it's doable. You just have to stay positive. And I hope that what we are going to learn today will help refine your idea, will help you prepare your slide deck, and I will give you tips that will help you win funding and start your uh, business. Um, so when you're preparing, uh, like every entrepreneur should know how to pitch. Pitching is very, very, a very important skill that every entrepreneur should have. You should know the business, you should know your idea or your business or your startup at the back of your mind because you never know when any funding opportunity will just present itself. Uh, I'll give you an example. Um, I used to go for ASU Change Maker Challenge Business Summits. And normally, the first time I went after the summit, they said, is there anybody here who wants to pitch their idea or who want to present uh, or talk about their businesses? I just shoot up my hand, went on stage, and I was told I have only two minutes to talk about my business. And guess what? I won funding just like that. I didn't prepare, I didn't show, I didn't, um, practice nothing. So every entrepreneur should have this pitching skill at the back of their mind all the time. So in today's workshop, we are going to talk about a five minute speech. And in this, we are going to talk about the content to include in your slide deck. These are like must have uh, key components of your business. The problem, the solution, the target market and competition, the business model and financial model, which is like a budget, and then the team. And I will give you tips uh, of to, the, the tips that you can use to present. And these will be tips before your presentation, during your presentation, and after your presentation. So if you have any questions, uh, or if you want me to repeat a slide or I highlight more about a certain thing that you want me to talk about, please send your questions and I will answer those. Let's get started. Okay, so this is the cover slide. So when you're pre preparing your slide deck, you must have a cover slide. Why? Um, it helps hook your audience. So the cover slide is very, very important because it shows the investor or the audience, or the judges up front, what your company does. And uh, it gives a high level summary of what your company is all about. So in this cover, uh, cover slide, you want to put your logo, uh, your startup name. And if you don't have a logo, no worries, because you might just have an idea and you've, you've not done much about it. Uh, you can put a question or you can put an image. Um, if you have a vision and mission, you can put that as well. But I want to encourage you that if you have a vision and mission, uh, please open a second slide and put the vision and mission on the second slide. If you don't have a vision and mission, you can still have a logo, business name, or a, an image or a question, but you want to show something that gives a hint of what your business is all about. Uh, here is my, I, uh, my example. So this is Pauline Foundation. Uh, the first slide is my logo and the tangling, and uh, it shows you who, what the business is about. Then in the second slide, I put my vision and mission. And if you have time, you can talk a little bit about them. But I mean, remember you have five minutes to pitch. Uh, your business. 
And now that we have a hint about your business or uh, what your company does, uh, you want to have a second, a second or third slide that talks about your problem. So this, the problem or the opportunity is the attention grabber. It grabs the attention of the audience, of the judges, of the investors. What is the problem your company is solving? Or what is the opportunity that your company is taking advantage of? Why solve this problem? Why do you care? Or why should the audience care? Why should the judges care? Um, and also, why is it urgent now? Why do you want to solve this problem now? You want to talk about all these things to get the attention of the judges or the investors. And I'll give you tips here. Uh, I want to encourage you to use an element of storytelling to emphasize the importance of, the, of solving this problem. You want to get the judges excited, the audience excited, in, excited and curious to learn about your solution just because of your story or your problem. Um, so sharing your story, you could use your personal experience or a family member that has faced that problem or somebody in the community or a friend. Just come up with a story that really relates or highlights this problem. Or you can use statistical data to back up the problem. How many people have been affected with this problem? You want to show that metrics, that status quo data to kind of really prove to the audience or to the judges or the investors that this is a serious problem. Um, I want to encourage you to fall in love with your problem, not the product, not the solution, not the service. When you fall in love with the pro product or the solution, what about if it doesn't, what about if it's not the right solution for this problem? So it's very important to first fall in love with the problem so that you can come up or you can present the right solution for this problem. And again, be clear and concise. Um, tell the judges like exactly what the problem is and how you're going to solve it. So here is my example. What is the problem? So I used statistical data to highlight the problem and uh, to show them that this is a huge problem that needs a immediate attention. And because I personally was a victim of this problem, I used my personal story to share, uh, to back up my problem that I'm solving. And every time I share my story, when after the presentation, people walk up to me and like, wow, that was amazing you have an incredible story. Oh, I would want to help you. How can I be of help? Just because I told my problem in a memorable way that even when people walk out of the room, they still remember the problem you're solving. I hope that helps somebody. Okay, now that you have told your problem in a relational, a relatable and fashionable way, what is the solution? How is your company solving this problem or how are you utilizing this opportunity? What is the product? What is the service you're offering? What value is your product or what value is your solution or your service giving to the people or the customers that you're serving? Um, so you want to show to, to, you should boil down exactly what your company does and what the value it is providing to your customers. You can use images. So you can use an, the image of your product. So for example, I use the products that we produce through Pauline Foundation. We teach girls skills and through the skills training, classes, we produce products. And so these are the products that we are teaching. I mean, we are producing. And you can use this product for this and that. You can use this bangle for healing or for something. So you want to show an image of your product. Or if you don't have an image or a 
you can use this uh, graphs graphs like I used this is our uh, solution and this is how we are teaching our girls. We give them education, we show skills, we do life skills training, we mentor them, we provide, I mean, we nurture talent. You want to show them that graphics. You can even uh, record a video. Uh, don't, don't demonstrate during your presentation, but you can record a video while doing your, uh, while producing your product or just to demonstrate, but at least you want to show the audience, the judges, that you are the expert. You know what you're talking about. If you have some traction, you want to show that as well. This is what we have done so far. This is proof that what I'm talking about or my solution works. And so you show them that traction. Um, I like using the market, uh, uh, the, golden, the golden rule marketing. Tell, show the, tell the futures of your product because futures tell and benefits sell. People are visual. They love to see. Uh, try to limit the number of texts you use. Use more of visuals to grab people's attention. So the market size and the competition, this is a must-have slide for for you, you should have this slide, it's very, very important. Now that you have defined your problem in a relatable, uh, I mean, now that you have showed uh, your, your problem in a relatable and used the story to grab their attention, now they know your solution and they, they have seen some of the products or seen some demonstration, now they want to know what is the market sales, who are your customers? You want to be specific who your customers are. What is the size of the market? You can use metrics here. You want to talk about your competitors, both direct competitors. Direct competitors, those are like people who are doing something very similar to what you're doing. And then indirect competitors, those are people that are doing something, competitors that are doing something that is not very, very related, but it somehow uh, uh, very close to what you're doing. And also you want to talk about the unique features of your product and what makes you different or what makes you unique from your competitors. The market size is a very important slide. Um, so when you're talking about uh, who your customers are, you want to be specific and you can use the term, some, same uh, model. So you want to talk about the total available market, the uh, serviceable available market, and the serviceable obtained market. Here is an example of uh, 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 a pitch from uh, Airbnb. So Airbnb, when they were pitching for funding, they talked about the total available market, which is the 1.9 uh, billion. And then they broke it down to the serviceable available market. And then they talked about the market share, the 10.6 million. That was the market that they are targeting. That is the market that they were talking about. That is the size that they are looking at. So you want to be very clear what size of market are you looking at. You can also use, uh, calculate the market size using metrics. You can calculate the number of potential customers, potential revenue, or potential total available market. But you want to show the investors that you have done your homework. Uh, you can use metrics. You can use uh, the competitive trade metrics to show what your competitors are doing and what you're doing to kind of show the gap that you're feeling and demonstrate how your service, how your solution, how your product is filling that missing gap. Again, when you're coming up with your market size, focus on either one or two constituencies. By constituencies, I mean, uh, for example, you could say I am focusing on only Arizona, or I am focusing on Arizona, California, and Utah, or I am focusing on the entire US. All my business is focusing global. You want to show the constituencies you're focusing at, the market you're looking at. Demonstrate that you have done research by using metrics, statistics, or uh, 
as you can even use a feedback from clients if you already have customers and you have traction you can use that feedback that you have received from clients uh, and also make sure you use again graphs charts to demonstrate the numbers the figures uh, for your target market and competition um, so now the business model that this is also very, very important because it helps explain your company creates value. Uh, the process, you want to talk about the process your company is using to acquire customers. Uh, how are you generating revenue? What are some of your channels of distribution? Who are your key partners? What are your key uh, activities? You want to talk about this. You want to show the investors that you are able to scale up and grow. I would really encourage all of you, whether you have launched a business, whether it's just an idea, to complete the business canvas model even before you start preparing your slide deck for the pitch competition. Because this will help you uh, refine and refine and plan for your business going forward so that even when you're given funding you know exactly what to do because you already use the business model canvas to highlight all the key areas of your business so you want to explain that as well um, so this is like one of the most important uh, slides for a pitch competition the budget the financial model. This is um, what is your financial projection. Uh, emphasize, again, use million, billion, trillion, but you have to use some sort of uh, currency to show your budget. What is the pricing of your products or your services? What is your break-even point? So break-even point is when you recover back every cost that you have invested in your business and now you're starting to make profits how many customers or users do you need to make a profit you want to show all that up front uh, this is uh, one of my slide deck that i use in my pitch uh, competition i mean pitch slide deck i show the expenses and i show the sources of income and then i also show that if you give me this funding, I will use it and this is how much I will raise. So you want to talk about that. The team. People invest in teams. Investors invest in you, not the product. Why? Because the product, your idea might not work. But if you have a good team, or if you want to change your idea, you have a good team that can actually execute an idea. So investors love to, they love to listen, to understand, to know that you have a credible team, a competent team that can work. Uh, mention their names and positions. What are the core skills of each member on your team? What work experience? What are some of the companies have they work, uh, worked with? What have they done that make them the right people for your team or the right people to work on this problem or the right people to do this business? You want to buy credible, you want to buy the judges trust that you have a competent, well-trained team. And you also, if you can, you can show, highlight or demonstrate uh, some of the projects that you have worked on together and you have shown like you can resolve conflict, you have good communication skills, you coordinate really well together. If you don't have a team and you're just by yourself, no worries. You can still talk about the advisors. What are some of the, ad who are these advisors that are helping you grow this business? Or what are some of the previous investors that have uh, uh, invested in your business. You want to talk about all those people. Again, this is all about buying credibility, buying trust that you can do uh, this business very well with this kind of people. So the ask, the ask is a must have. I have seen some people pitch and just finish their pitch 
with, without asking. I mean, why are you here? You want to tell them exactly what you want. Remember to ask for funds. And when you ask for funds, show how you're going to use it and the impact it's going to have on your business or the community you serve. So highlight if you already have traction, highlight what you have done so far and how your ask is going to help you scale up. And so you, can, you, you must have like your goals, your future goals, what you want to do in the future at the back of your mind because they could even ask for numbers or demonstration or, or something that proves that you have a goal. And you want to show how this funding, how this investment is going to help you achieve that goal. Um, so for example, in, um, I, in my slide deck, I asked for $3,000 and I broke it down how we are going to use it. We are going to buy machines, we are going to buy materials, we are going to pay for overheads. And this will help us double our production every day. And we will be able to produce this X amount of products that we will sell at this price and we'll raise this much revenue and it will help us grow the foundation and reach out to so many other people that need our services. That's how you want to talk about it. Okay, so now I am just going to give you general tips that you can use before, during, and after your presentation. So before your presentation, you must have clear and readable slides. Again, use minimal texts, use uh, pictures, and I would encourage you to use at least one or two pictures per slide. Don't exceed two images. If all possible, just use one image per slide. Uh, you don't want to mess up your slides. And also there's no right way of arranging the slides. You can arrange the slides in a way that makes sense to you or how you want your story to flow. Um, prepare, prepare, prepare. <laughs> uh, practice how you say it because again, it's not what it's not the content that you're saying that people are interested in. It's the way you're saying it. If possible, record yourself on a video and rewatch that video or look yourself in the mirror, present yourself or speak in front of friends and family. Just practice. You want to spend at least an hour for every minute of your presentation. Know your audience. Uh, when you're presenting, you, want, you might even go to the, the if you, you physically you're going to go and meet and pitch, you want to go and study the audience, study where is the, uh, the, where is the, where is it facing? How am I going to look? How should I stand? You want to know your audience. Are they young people? Are they old people? Like you want to kind of understand the kind of audience that you're going to talk to. And uh, you want to engage and connect. Anticipate questions. When you're preparing for your pitch, think through some of the questions that they might ask you. And so you prepare for those upfront. It's during the presentation, it's very, very normal to be nervous and it's okay. And actually it's fun to be nervous, but take a deep breath, focus when you're presenting, focus on people. Normally I usually go to the bathroom before I go on stage. I go to the bathroom and I do a power pause in the mirror and talk to myself, give myself a real talk. You can do it, you're good. So that you create a positive image of yourself and that will help you pay attention to your body language and it will help calm down your nerves. And uh, I mean, try, try as much as you can to smile because when you smile, people connect to you. It also helps take away the nervousness. Um, when you're presenting, you can also look for somebody in the audience who is smiling or who is nodding to your presentation. And because those kind of people boost you, they give you confidence, they, they give you this keep going, keep going. So engage, again, engage and connect to your audience. But also try not to just 
uh, uh, stay focused on one person uh, or maybe just look in one direction of the room. You want to look left, right, or even take a walk if you can. Uh, when the judges are asking questions or if there's anybody in the audience asking a question, please listen to the question. Uh, don't answer, don't interrupt before they finish the question. Listen. And so, and actually you can even take a, a 10 seconds or 20 seconds to think through the question and then answer. But you want to first, you want to wait and listen to the questions so that you can answer those. After the presentation, follow up with feedback. Go talk to judges, go talk to people, ask them, how was my presentation? Did you like it? What did you learn? What can I improve? I always do that. And every time I do it, actually in the audience, I get somebody who is interested in what I'm doing. They ask me, can I volunteer? Can I help? Can I do this? I have an idea. And so you want to get that feedback from the audience. Uh, send a thank you note, a thank you note to the judges, to the organizers. Um, and so that, you know, you never know. You might not get funding, but get a good partner or get good uh, marketing, uh, marketing manager. Or like you can, something might come up, but you want to say thank you to the organizers, to the judges, to the audience. You want to say thank you. So again, Pitching takes time. You cannot get it right the first time. That the more you do it, the more you do it, you get used to it, you improve yourself, your slide deck, your public speaking skills, and um, a five minutes. I would also encourage you to limit your slides to 10 or 12 slides uh, when you're presenting so that people pay attention to you rather than what you're um, presenting. Um, thank you so much. I have this slide that has additional resources. It has uh, the business Canva model template if you want to practice and complete your business model canvas. I really encourage you to do that. And uh, there's uh, an example of a five minutes business pitch presentation. You can practice using that. And then they, um, there's an examples of some of the big companies, uh, examples of pre uh, pitch presentations from some of the big companies in the US. And also there's a slide deck of Colin Foundation uh, pitch that, that I always use to pitch for funding. Uh, thank you. That's Hi, everybody. This is Ethan here. Thanks, Pauline, for sharing with us. This has been really great knowledge. Um, and as part of Dream Builder, we're really excited to announce right now that you can put all of this knowledge that Pauline shared with you to work. We're going to host the first ever Dream Builder pitch competition for graduates in Arizona, New Mexico, Colorado, and Texas. And the way this is going to work right now is we're going to take 50 submissions through a short two minute video with a small pitch in it. And from those, those we're gonna choose the top five participants who then will be able to move forward and pitch in front of a live panel of industry professionals. Um, and winners of this will receive professional consulting from this pan, this, the judge panelists and cash prizes to help get your business going. And so I think that some of these things that Pauline shared are going to totally go to use for that. And Pauline, I'd like to ask you, when have you ever done a, a shorter uh, pitch or a small video pitch? And how do you kind of shape that different to maybe when you do the in-person pitch? So for a, a short, um, well, maybe I can pitch right now, right? Okay, that would be great. <laughs> so when it's pitch. Hey, uh, this is Pauline Foundation, a nonprofit based in Uganda. We are solving the problem of vulnerable youth that have lost employment or cannot find employment because of limited skills. So we teach them skills, we give them mentorship, we nurture talent, and we help them find employment. Um, so we are looking for $1,000 to help us hire 
trainers to teach these girls. And we hope that these trainers will help them find employment. And in the next two months, we, our goal is to train 200 girls and help connect them to jobs. And so if you give us this funding, will help us reach our goal. Uh, if you want more information about what we do, please reach out to blah, 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 blah. <laughs> Talk about the problem, the solution, uh, the, the money amount you're asking for and how you're going to use it and how it's going to help you grow. Great, thank you. Mm -hmm. If there's any questions from any of our attendees, we have a Q&A as part of Zoom or on the Facebook Live, you can put questions in there and we can get them to Pauline and get those answered. But for right now, I'm just gonna ask a few. Uh, I wanna go back to the practicing for this, Pauline. Yes. When you practice for your pitch, you gave a lot of insight about your nerves and how you prepare right there. And the day of, but what is the more of the buildup to that practice? You said a, a one hour for every minute of your pitch, but how many people have, do you talk to? How many times do you think that you actually go through your deck or your pitch so that you really know it? So I practice my deck five days before the day I, I pitch. Mm -hmm. Day one, I practice to myself. And so that I get everything in my head. And then I will go to somebody that I know, for example, Kelly. Uh, she runs a nonprofit, Thunderbird for Good. And then I pitch to her and pretend she's the judge and get all her feedback and go back and practice her feedback, change my slide deck, arrange it as she, depending on her feedback, and pitch to myself again. Kind of like memorize, but not like memorize, but you want to know those words in your head. You don't want to keep reading your slide deck, reading your slide deck. You can have some notes in your hands while presenting, but it would be amazing if you speak from your heart. And then getting that feedback, then I go to another you know, person or maybe a friend or my roommate and I pitch again, get feedback and go back. So you want to prepare five days before. And by the time you go to pitch, you know your what to say, how to say it, when to say it, how to stand, you already have this confidence, you already have this self-positive image, and actually your nerves really calm down when you know exactly what to say, yeah. Thanks, that makes a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. I have one more question here. Um, mm -hmm. When you talked about the market size and kind of the money ask, and you, you pitched us big numbers, what if some people are only starting to get right off the ground and, the, and, and it's smaller? Should you feel, do you ever feel, sometimes I guess people feel weird about even asking for money. And so is that something that you had to think about or deal with or, or, or when that changed for you? Um, so normally, normally, but uh when you, there's a pitch competition, they tell how much they're giving, what's the maximum amount they're giving or the minimum amount. So you have an idea. You don't want to ask for more than what they're giving. Uh, but also you can. I mean, I remember I pitched at Thunderbird and I knew how much the maximum they're giving and I asked exactly for that. But they said, no, you can ask for more. You never know. Just be true to yourself. Come up with a realistic number. This is what I want to achieve my goals and put it there. Whatever they give you, go with that. But you want to have that number. I mean, as long as it's what you need to run your business, just don't be apologetic about it. That's what you need. <laughs> Ask for it. If you get it, you get it. If you get less than that, it's fine. But uh, um, don't ask for something that is not realistic. You know, if you're just starting and ask for $1 million, come on. But if you ask and say, I need $1 million in the next three years to achieve this. But if you can give me $10,000 now, it will help me go to this stage, go to this stage, or move to this stage. You want to break it down to that as well. So also, you're pitching for funding. Ask the money. Ask for it. Say it. 
I want $10,000 to do this and this. I want a million dollars to do this and this. I want a billion dollars to do this and this. Ask for it. Yeah. Great. Thank you. We have a question from our Facebook Live. What has been the most interesting challenge you have had in, a, in preparing or during a pitch? Well, it's getting better now. I didn't know how to ask. <laughs> I could just share. I am very good at sharing my story and making people fall in love with my problem and my solutions. And then they're like, okay, what? What do you want? How can we help you? I didn't know about that. All I didn't know how to show like the budget. But with time, as again, I said, present to people, get feedback, present to people, get feedback. And so that feedback helps you change your uh, slide. And so you know what to ask and how to ask it and get it. So my challenge was the ask, but now I don't even think about it. If I want it, I ask and I get it. Uh, well, I get it or not, but at least I ask. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's perfect. And right there when you said, I get it or not, I'd like mm -hmm. to ask you about maybe some people who have had an experience or want to go in the pitch competition, but when they don't get it, how do you, how do you move forward as it was a learning experience and keep going to the next one instead of letting that, that not loss, but not getting any funding? How do you help move forward after that? So when I don't get it, and I, there's a time when I didn't get it, <laughs> because I was used to getting, 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 but then I, re, I re pitched and I didn't get it. I felt a little bit bad, but then I was like, there's something that I think I missed that I didn't get it. So what did I do? I went to the judges and I asked, where did I go wrong? Or what do you encourage or advise me to change to make sure that I get this kind of funding that I want? And so the judge told me, you did this well, the problem was well, the story was incredible, but the financials, well, they didn't make sense. They didn't, I mean, we didn't know exactly, it, it wasn't realistic. So you want to go and work on your financials so that next time you know what you're talking about and you know how much you need. And when I used that feedback, guess what? I got like three times what I wanted the next time I teach. So ask for feedback. Oh, you can even go to your professor, your mentor, your other people and tell them, I didn't get this uh, funding and I want it so bad. Let me pitch to you again. And so you help me figure out where did I go wrong? And so you get that feedback. Don't feel bad, it's a learning process. That's great advice, thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, we have another question from Facebook Live. How important is it to tell your story? So when you tell your story, it gives the people the impression that this is not something you just read about on internet in the news or something that you just went and Googled. That experience, um, I always tell people that uh, you cannot solve the problem so well that you have not experienced. You have, or, or, or you don't have not, like you need to, at least a friend and say, oh, my friend went through this problem and this is how my friend felt and this is how it affected me as a person. I want to do something about it. All my child, my husband, my wife, my children, my neighbor, went through this and it affected the entire neighborhood and we were all disturbed or like you want to tell that story it makes people emotional and be like wow I want to be part of that solution I want to be part of that and I want to help you achieve your dream so story storytelling is very even if it's just a product it's just a product. I've been thinking about this product and I think it's a good, good product. Um, this is the story. One day I went to a restaurant and I didn't like this cup. I didn't like this glass. This is how I felt. And I think I want to, I have a better idea, a better product that would help people, you know? So you want to tell a story. Yeah. That's great. Thank you. Mm -hmm. If we have any more questions, we can put them in the chat on Zoom or a Facebook Live. But I'm gonna go ahead and ask another one while we have them here. The opposite to not getting the funding, when you actually get the funding, how do you personally 
work through making sure that you use it how you said you were going to use it because sometimes you've won a lot of money and that can be really exciting yeah. and how have you planned to to use that money the right way so that's why i want to encourage everybody to do a business canva model uh, business model canvas because you get the money and you get excited and then like what what next and it's very very easy for you to use that money on expenses or spend it on expenses that don't help your business grow you know you could pay maybe uh, salaries or something or like just spend it on something that won't take your business to the next level so when you get the money have a mentor like have a financial advisor or a business coach like i have five thousand dollars this is my dream this is my vision how do I break it so that it, it helps me move from one step, one stage to another to be able to help me achieve my dream? Don't touch it. Don't use it. Look through your budget over and over again. Sometimes you might make up figures in your presentation, but when you get the money, then that's like real. You have to sit down and be like, well, is I really, did I really mean, do I really want to do this and rechange or re refine your budget to make sure you use it. I always tell my team, we cannot spend this money on that because it will not help us move forward. It's just like an overhead cost that won't help us move forward. Let's spend it on something that will show traction, that will produce traction that we can show to our donors or our investors to give us more funding. You know? That's awesome. I hear that. To so use it as it is an investment to help your business. It's not just funding for your business. No. You really want to use it to grow. To grow, yes. Yeah. Um, does anyone else have any questions? We have a few more minutes here. We could get a couple more in. We'll give people a few seconds, Pauline. But we really appreciate your time. I think that this has been really eye-opening. And for everyone i can say that i've seen pauline pitch mm -hmm. and she does have an amazing story and and it does bring you in and so the question that was about how important is the story mm -hmm. i've seen dozens of people pitch and and in my take this story is the most important it's part the most important, right? yeah. you you can have a great product or you can have a great business and it, it can all make sense Mm -hmm. And we can say, oh, we can see them going, they're going to make money. But if they are losing the story, you go, hmm, that's yeah. not the one that pulled me in, even though everything about it makes sense. Do you agree? Yes, I, I totally agree. I think I sometimes I've received funding, not because I have good financials or projections or I have the great service, but because of my story. It's like, I think she's the right person to solve this problem because of the story that she gave and just get fun for that. But also your story attracts other people. Not, so like teaching you might not get money, but actually get something even more valuable than money. Somebody will be like, oh, I have been thinking about doing something similar to that. I have been, my mother went through that. My relative went through that. And I was thinking, what can I do? Is it okay if we work together? I have an idea. You can bring your idea, bring my idea. So you get a team. Like some people would volunteer. I have received people who say, I want to come to Uganda. I want to see these girls. Like, you know. It attracts people to be part of you, to connect with you, and actually you might get big investors um, for your business. Yeah. Cool. Can oh, we have another question from Facebook Live. Can you give some advice to a young entrepreneur? So kind of moving from pitch competition, what, what really is the driver that got you going before you had it? the opportunity to do a pitch competition. And when you were getting the Pauline Foundation off the ground, mm -hmm. what, 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 what were kind of the, the moments that you learned to make it better before mm -hmm. you even went into a pitch competition? Okay, so I, it's the first thing is to, if you have an idea or you want to do something, the first thing that I always do is to identify people that I look up to. 
people that have done something similar to what I want to do, I always encourage young people to have three types of network. You want to have the operational network. So that's like the network. Uh, if you want to borrow a car, <laughs> they let you borrow your car. If you want to do something they want, you know, they help you move forward. And then you want to have the relational uh, kind of emotional support network, your family, your friends. And then you want to have a strategic network. The strategic network is the network that will help you go into those rooms, those boardrooms that you never go to. You will never have access if you didn't know so and so. So you want to have those three types of network people so you know where to go when you need help. I always have, I have mentors. I have mentors that help me with my business. I have mentors that mentor me in terms of my career, my relationship with people, my, my marriage. I, you know, I have different kinds of people helping me in different areas. I want to encourage young people to network 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 and be strategic when you're networking look for people that will help you move from one stage to another people that will get excited about your passion people that are excited to see you grow people that want to nurture you into the person you're dreaming of those are the kind of people and even if you have crazy ideas that don't make sense. The fact that you have a team of people and network that is here to help you, they will help you anyway. And they will give you genuine feedback. They'll be like, that is crazy, but let's see what we can do, <laughs> you know? Networking is very important and it will take your places, yeah. That's great. It Not opens so many other doors. I mean, when I pitched for uh, Change Maker Challenge, that was my first pitch. And uh, after that, I started networking with students, with uh, the directors, and everybody. And then they started telling me other funding opportunities that I didn't know about, that I wouldn't know about if it wasn't for them. And they didn't just tell me, but they told me this is what they look for, this is how you prepare, this is how you pitch, and here I am. So networking is very important. And you've made it. We're happy. Yes. Yes. <laughs> and it's because of those people. Not, yeah. It's not that's like, that's really great advice to not to not do it alone. I think that sometimes we have a great idea and we've done all of our background research and, and we know how we go, we know how to move forward. Mm -hmm. But moving forward by yourself, maybe not always is the best option when you're trying to have growth, when you're trying to yes. get to the next level. Yeah, great things are done with people. <laughs> we'll remember that one. We'll, we'll post yes. on our Facebook. <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. So we'll wrap up here. We really appreciate your time and the knowledge that you were able to share with mm -hmm. everyone who's in attendance and beyond. We're really excited again about the Dream Builder pitch competition and hope that we get all those submissions in, we'll be updating our Facebook page to have all of that there for everyone. And we'll have links to it in our upcoming July newsletter. So everyone keep an eye open for that. And uh, Pauline, are you available if anyone that's on the phone wanted to find you on LinkedIn, was able to send you a message and connect, and maybe they could give their two minute pitch to you? Sure, or yes. I am happy to help. <laughs> Thank you. That's great. So everybody look for Pauline on LinkedIn. She's there. And if you have any last questions right before we go, we can get them in. But otherwise, we hope everyone has a great day from all of us at Dream Builder. And we hope that your, your entrepreneurship turns into a business and you, and you can succeed. You will yeah, succeed. You can do it. <laughs> yes. Okay. All right. Okay, thank you. Cool. Have a wonderful day, everybody. Thank, thank you. you. Bye.